Hi all of you. A very good evening and welcome to today's live session. So this is Gayatri here. As you all know, today the questions uh, that we are going to be uh, solving are questions for the IBPS pre PO prelims examination and we are going to be doing qu questions from the quantitative ability section. Uh, the questions that have been chosen for today's session are the questions that were asked in the last week's All India Mock Examination. Okay. So how was last week's All India Mock Examination IBPS PO prelims? Uh, tell me that how was quantitative ability section? to all of you. Yes, so if you look at last week's paper, uh, there was one question on uh, boats and streams, then uh, one que uh, two questions on time and work, then there were questions on simplifications, five questions on simplifications, five questions on equations, then five number series questions and uh, there were two sets of data interpretation. Now out of this two sets of data interpretation, one set was fairly easy. So um, uh, and the, uh, there is one set was on uh, I think, uh, what was the first set on, yeah, uh, international flights, domestic flights in different months, yes. So that set was fairly easy. I hope all of you should have uh, got that set uh, correctly. Uh, then uh, the next one, okay, the next one was uh, the data interpretation set. That is, you were given a pie chart and a table. That was time consuming, I would say, a lot of calculations involved. So I... I felt that might be you should not have uh, focused on that particular data interpretation set because there were a lot of other questions which you could have uh, definitely got correct like equations very easy all the questions were then data sufficiency again five questions were there very easy then simplifications was fairly okay so all of these questions you should have definitely attempted and got it correct then uh, number series some of them were easy then uh, the other questions on time and work uh, time and distance then as I said there was a question on um, boats and streams so all of these also were not very difficult I would say yes uh, definitely the data interpretation set the last data interpretation set on pie chart and table was time consuming you could have given that a skip right you could have also solved it but first you should not be solving such questions in the beginning you should keep it towards the end yes so I think we'll start so some of you have shared your score Okay, now let's uh, solve the questions and let's see where uh, you went wrong. Might be if you have made any mistakes, uh, you would be able to understand where you went wrong so that next time you don't repeat these mistakes in the exam. So let me share my screen and let us look at the first question for the session. So how would you solve this? X is thrice good a workman as Y and is therefore able to finish a piece of work in 16 days less than Y. Find the time in which they can do it together. So what is given here? See, uh, X is thrice good a workman as Y. So if I say that X, okay, in one day he is using, he is doing 3P, I am just taking P as some variable, okay. If, if I say in one day X is using, doing 3P units of work, in the same day how many units of work will Y do? Y will only do P units of work. That's what it means, right? What does the statement mean? X is thrice as good a workman as Y. That means that in one day, if X does 3P units, Y does only P units. Now, next, what are they saying? They are saying that, uh, again, I am, I am going to assume that Y is finishing the work in D days. So, if Y finishes the work in D days, and how many days is X finishing the work? X is finishing the work in D minus 16 days. So the work that y does in d days, x is taking only d minus 16. So what can I say? See p is doing p units for d days or I can say the total work is nothing but pd. Here what is the total work? The total work is nothing but 3p into d minus 16. Remember for any given work, the total work is always the same. So you can equate these two, right? Both of these are the same because the total units of work remains the same for any given work right or if you solve this what do you get you get d is equal to 3d minus 48 is equal to d or i can say 2d is equal to 48 or d is equal to 24 or what can i say d that is y is doing the work in d days or i can say y is completing the work in 24 days so in how many days will x complete the work x will complete the work in d minus 16 days or that is 8 days so put together right uh, y and x how many work how many how many days will they complete the work so y is completing the work in 24 days means in one day y will do 1 by 24th of the work in one day x will do 1 by 8th of the work so put together in one day x and y will do so much 
right what is this this is nothing but 4 by 24 which is equal to 1 by 6 so put together x and y in one day they will do 1 by 6 of the work or the full work is completed in 6 days so the correct answer for this question here is option 5 6 days See, you need not take P here, I just, since sometimes the value might not be 3 units exactly, I just took P. You can directly take it as 3, uh, X does three, 3 units in a day, right, and X takes D minus 16 days to finish the work. Y does 1 unit in a day, and Y will take D days to finish the work. If you equate it this way also, you will anyway get the same answer, okay. Till this point, anyway, the calculation is the same. Uh, from this point, yes, definitely you can use the LCA method. See, at this point, let us say you want to do the LCA method. You do not want to do this method. How will you do it? Y is doing the work in 24 days. X is doing the work in 8 days. What is the LCM of 8 and 24? LCM of 8 and 24 is uh, 24 only, right? Yeah. So, now, uh, what can I say? I can say that in one day, Y does one unit. How many units will X, the, X do in a day? X will do? Uh, 3 units. So, put together x and y, how many units will they do? In one day, they will do 4 units. So, total work is 24 units. They are doing 4 units in a day. So, how many days is the uh, complete work done? 24 by 4, 6. In 6 days, they will finish the work. 24 is the four total units, 4 units done in a day. So, totally in 6 days. Next one. 35 women earned rupees 143500 by working for 25 days. How many men must work for 12 days to receive 70848 rupees provided uh, the daily wages of the man is twice that of the woman? Very easy question actually it is. Uh, it is very basic logic, no concept of time and work and all that you use actually here. See what is given here, 35 women okay, are earning so much by working for 25 days. So, one woman, one day, what will be her wage? It is nothing but 143500 divided by 25 into 35. This is the earning of one woman in one day, right? So, 4100 divided by 25, which is equal to 164. Okay, so earning of one woman in one day is 164. Now, what is the earning of one man? in one day. See, it is given that a man earns twice that of a woman. So, the man will earn 164 into 2 rupees in a day. Now, what is the total uh, money that has been spent? The total money that has been spent is 70848. Okay. And uh, how many men, how many days are the men working? The men are working for 12 days. And every day, one man gets so much money. So, how many men are there? Number of men. How do I find out? Number of men is equal to the total money that they have, be, have given to men divided by the number of men, number of days for which the men work into the salary that each person gets every day. Right? That will give you how many men are there. So, when you solve this, you will get the answer as 18 men. So, the correct answer here is option 3. I hope it is clear. See, one man in one day receives so much money. So, totally we have spent uh, 70848 rupees for the men and they are working for 12 days. And every day one man gets 164 into 2 rupees. So, how many uh, men are there? That is all. Next. So, the next question is on simplifications. 1378 divided by 65 plus 67.5 percentage of 348 is equal to question mark squared minus 67.9. See, the way you approach this question is very important. Do not actually uh, try and calculate the exact values here. If you look at the options, you can very clearly see that the options are spaced quite far and for this question you can arrive at the answer based on the options given that is the easiest way in which you can approach this question now what is 1378 divided by 65 right see i know this answer is going to be approximately uh, 20 right i don't know an exact value i'm just approximating it to 20 right so because i know 65 into 2 is 130, right? So, 1378 uh, will be somewhere 65 into 20, okay? So, I have approximated that here. Then you have 67.5 percentage of 348. Now, again, 67.5 percentage of 348 means, see, uh, again, the value that you are going to get as answer here 
is somewhere close to 200, right? 200 and some value, right? Because see, 67.5, 50 percentage of uh, 348 is nothing but 350 divided by 2, correct? That is 175. So 67.5, you can approximate it as 200 for now, okay? Because I'm just doing very rough calculations, so okay? That is very uh, approximate calculations, not exact values also I'm not finding out. So here, this is equal to question mark squared minus 67.9. Now, the question mark squared, right? Whatever should come here, uh, the answer that you get will somewhere be close to what? It will somewhere be close to 300, 300 some value, right? 300 and something. That's going to be what's going to come here, right? So, square of a number is close to 300. Look at the options. There is only one option which can come here, that is 18, right? So, definitely the answer is going to be 18, right? So, when you actually solve this, the answer that you get will be 300 and some value. If you do the exact calculations, you will get the answer as 324. But we don't have to find that. Given these values here, it is not very easy to calculate that it's time consuming, right? But based on the options, very clearly you can narrow down on 18 and mark that as your answer, okay? So whenever you see such calculations, do not skip the question immediately assuming that I'm not going to be able to calculate this. Check once with the options also, whether you will be able to eliminate with the options and arrive at the answer, okay? Yes, so here the answer is anyway going to be 18, option 3. So. I have not calculated the exact values here. Don't get confused. These are not the exact values. I have just written down close by values. That's all. Next question. So how did you guys solve this question? So uh, see, uh, one way, I'll teach you two ways to approach this question. So uh, let us see both the ways. Now, uh, see, one way is this, right? See, I am, they're asking what is 29 percentage of 265. See, I know what is 30 percentage of 265. What is 30 percentage of 265? See, what is 10 percentage of 265? 10 percentage of 265 is 26.5. So 26.5 into 3 will be 30 percentage of 265. This minus 1 percentage. Now again, what is 1 percentage of uh, 265? It is 2.65. Basically, I am finding out what is 29 percentage. Okay. See, 29 percentage is what? Nothing but 30 percentage minus 1 percentage. Right. So, 30 percentage of 265 is 26.5 into 3. What is 1 percentage of 265? 2.65 right similarly to calculate 23 percentage of 435 what can I do I have to find out what is 20 percentage of 435 right that is 43.5 into 2 plus again 3 percentage of 435 so what is again 3 percentage of 435 4.35 into 3 you can do it this way right and uh, here you have 8 percentage of 242 so 8 percentage of 242 uh, how will you do see again you know what is uh, 10 percentage of 242 that is 24.2 minus 2.42 into 2 right similarly 6.5 percentage of 190 that is nothing but uh, 1.9 into 6 plus 0 0.95 find out all these values and just do the addition subtraction that's all you will get the exact answer if you do it this way now the other way in which uh, you can try out this question is you can try and apply the digital root method the digital root method works for this particular question so how will i apply digital root method for this question uh, okay before i go to digital root method let me just give you these values here uh, you can cross check if you are getting the answer if you are following this method this will be equal to 100 19.36 12.35 okay and then just do these operations. You just have to add these two and subtract and then add these two. Right? So you will have to do 76.85 plus 100. You can minus 19 plus 12 approximately. Right? So when you do this, you will get the answer close to 145. You can take this answer. answer. Now, applying the digital root method works here. So let us try out the digital root method also. This method I hope is clear. So this is what I did was uh, these percentages I have calculated. Okay, I have split and calculated the percentages and solved. Now the other way you can solve it as I said is using the digital root method. Actually the digital root method works very well for this question. See the disadvantage of digital root method is that many times it doesn't work for the question especially when more than uh, two options have the same digital root. But here it works fine. So let me just rewrite the question in such a way that it's easy for us to calculate the digital root. So what is given here? 29 percentage is nothing but 0 0.29, right? 29 by 100, that is 0 0.29. So 0 0.29 into 265 plus 0 0.23 into 
435 minus 0 0.08 into 242 minus uh, 0 0.065 into 190. So, this is my numbers that I have. Now, what is the digital root of this term? It is 2, right? Digital root of this term 6 plus 5, 11, 11 plus 2, 13. So, 13 means digital root is 4, right? 13 minus 9 you have to do. Always omit the 9 wherever you see. So, 13 minus uh, 9 that is 4 is the digital root here. Then next what just put these operations as such okay here what will be the digital root this is 5 into here you have uh, 9 so this will be uh, 3 then this minus you put as such so digital root here will be uh, 8 into again 8 minus here digital root will be uh, 11 right so uh, 6 plus 5 is 11 so the digital root is 2 2 into 190 digital root is 1. So, just perform these. This is 8 plus 15 minus 64 minus 2. That is 8 plus 6 minus 1 minus 2. So, what do you have here? Um, 8, 8 uh, plus 3 that is 11 or here the digital root is 2. So, digital root is 2. Now, check with the options which op uh, check if there is only one option which has this digital root. Which one is that? See, 142.19. What is the digital root here? 9 is gone. Then you have uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 is the digital root here, right? Now, if you look at this option, 9 is gone. This is also adds to 9 gone. So, here the digital root is 2. Check this option, 9 gone. Here you have again 9 gone. Digital root is 7. Here, uh, if you look at this option, mm -hmm. 9 gone, 9, digital root is 7. Here also 9 gone, 5, 9, digital root is 1. So, the correct answer here, obviously, the digital root is matching with option 2. So, the correct answer is option 2. Okay. As I said, digital root method, sometimes it fails for some questions. But for this particular one, it is working properly. Next one. Now, next comes the questions on data sufficiency. Again, in this week's paper, questions on data sufficiency were uh, mark, sco mark scoring. So, uh, for these questions and all, you need not remember the rule for data sufficiency. Do not waste your time finding out the actual value. Just read what is given and understand whether you will be able to arrive at the answer or not with the given statement. That's all is needed. Okay. Now, what is given here? Uh, so, the answer for this question, a lot of you are giving me the answer as option 3. So, let us look at this question. What are they saying? What is the population of state X? First statement says, after 18 percentage increase, the population of state X will become 21.24 lakhs. I have to find out the population of state X. See, there is an 18 percentage increase in population and now the population has become 21.24. 2, 4 lakhs. So, very easy, right? If the population was X, right? Now, there is an 18 percentage increase and this has resulted in a population of 21.24 lakhs. I can find out the value of X using the given information, right? So, obviously, using this statement alone, I can find out what is the population of state X. Now, do not stop here and mark the answer as option 1. Check with the other statements also. So, definitely right now, I have concluded that using this first statement, I am able to arrive at the answer. Now, let me look at the second statement. What does the statement say? The population of state Y is 16.5 lakhs. Okay, state Y population is 16.5 lakhs. What does the third statement say? Now, using the statement 2 alone, I cannot conclude anything, right? I want the uh, population of state X. Using state Y's population, what can I conclude? I cannot conclude anything about X. Now, look at the third statement. What does the third statement say? The ratio of population of state X to that of state Y is 12 is to 11. Now, if I combine these two statements, I will be able to find out what is the population of state X. How is that? See, if population of state X is 12X, then population of state Y is 11X. Right? Now, they have given here that 11x is equal to 16.5 lakhs. So, obviously, I can find out what is 12x, which is the population of state x. So, if I combine the statement 2 and 3, I will still be able to find out the population of state x. So, what will be your answer? Either only 1 is enough, right? Only 1 is enough or I have to combine 2 and 3 to get the answer. So, the correct answer here is option D, either only 1 or 2 and 3.
okay so in such questions please when the first option is satisfying like let us say here the first statement satisfies so immediately don't mark the answer as option one always check all the statements and then mark your answer okay next question how many workers will be required to complete the construction work in six days so uh, what is the answer here yes lot of you say the answer is option four let's check now what does the first statement say uh, 20 percentage of the work can be completed by 12 workers in 12 days or they are saying that one by fifth right one by fifth of the work is completed by 12 workers in 12 days so using this given information i can find out uh, how uh, what is the work done by one person in one day and i can find out if the work has to be completed in six days how many workers are required yes so using the statement one alone i am able to arrive at the answer similarly next statement 18 workers can complete the work in 40 days so again i can find out say 18 workers can complete the work in 40 days so if i have to complete the work in six days how many workers are required i'll be able to find that out right next one one eighth of the work can be completed by six workers in 15 days again it is given here that one by eighth of the work is done by six workers working for 15 days again i'll be able to find out uh, what is the work done by one person in one day and how many persons are required to complete this work in six days so any of these three statements you take you will be able to find the answer for the given question so the correct answer here will be any one of the three is enough to arrive at the answer yes everybody got it correct good next one what is the area of a hall so again they have given us three statements what is the area of a hall now the material cost floor for flooring the hall per square meter is 280 so uh, per square meter cost of material is given as 280 now next statement what does it say now using this alone i cannot say what is the area of the hall right see let us say the area of the hall is x square meters i have to find out the value of x now here per square meter cost is given i have to find out how many square meters are there right using statement one alone i can't say what the answer is next statement the labor cost of flooring the hall is 4500 see this labor cost is a fixed cost right 4500 rupees is fixed for flooring this particular hall you have to give the laborers 4500 rupees that is a fixed cost again using second statement alone you can't find the answer for the question third statement the total cost of flooring the hall is 18500 again using the third statement alone right if i use third statement alone what do i know i know the total cost of flooring with that i cannot say how many square meters are there but if i combine these three statements together i'll be able to find out what is the total area of the hall how is that see total cost of flooring is 18500 and out of this 18500 4500 accounts for what 4500 accounts for labor right so actually what is going to be the cost of the uh, materials it is going to be 18500 minus 4500 now what does this cost of material account to this cost of materials is nothing but 280 into x see totally if the area of this hall is x square meter per square meter they are going to charge 280 rupees for the materials so for the total hall the total cost for the material is nothing but 280 into x and that is equal to this value so you can solve and find out the value of x right so if you use all the three statements you will be able to arrive at the answer so the correct answer here will be option four all one two and three i hope it is clear see the labor cost is given and the total cost is given so if i subtract the labor cost from the total cost i will get the cost for the materials now the total cost for the materials i know is so much and i know the cost per square meter okay of material is 280 so how many square meters are there you can directly find that out so all these three are required to arrive at the answer option four next one an institute employs a manager an observer and an assistant what is the monthly salary of an assistant so a lot of you are giving me the answer as option one okay let us check see what is given in the first statement the first statement says that i have to find out the salary of the assistant the observer and the assistant together get 38000 rupees per month so salary of observer plus salary of assistant is equal to 38000 next each observer gets 14000 rupees per month more than the assistant so the observer gets 
each observer gets a plus 14,000. Right now, using these two statements directly, I will be able to find out what is the salary of an assistant. Right, so statement one and two is enough to arrive at the answer. Now, let us look at statement three. What are they saying? The statement three says the total salary per month of a manager and observer is 65,000. Here, they are giving salary of manager plus observer is 65,000. So, using this statement, I cannot arrive at the answer. Right, I need the salary of the assistant or I have to find out the value of A. So, if I use statement one and two. I will be able to arrive at the answer. So, the correct answer here is only 1 and 2 is enough to arrive at the answer. Option 1. Next one. Everybody got it correctly. Good. So, next we are coming to the questions on equations. 12x squared plus 6x, 16x is equal to minus 5. 4y squared plus 13y plus 9 is equal to 0. So, how would you solve this? Again, you can uh, solve it using the sign table, right? Uh, 12x squared plus 16x minus 5, that is equal to 0. So, this is the equation that you have. So, let us first find out the root for this equation. Now, the next equation, let me just write that down here also. 4y squared plus 13y plus 9, that is equal to 0. Sorry, plus 5, right? Plus 5. Minus 5 on that side, when it comes to this side, it becomes plus 5. If you, I am going to solve for x, so I have to find out two numbers whose product, right, what is 12 into 5? 60. So I have to find two numbers whose product is 60 and whose sum is 16. So which are the two numbers whose product is 60 and sum is 16? It will be 10 and 6, right? So 10, 6. Now, uh, uh, 10 and 6 you use, then uh, here the coefficient of x squared is 12. So divide your answers by 12. Right. So, uh, now 10 by 6, uh, 10 by 12 and 6 by 12. Now, what is 10 by 12? 10 by 12 is nothing but 5 by 6 and 6 by 12 is 1 by 2. Now, according to the sign table, what will be the sign of the roots? See, if both the, uh, both plus are coming, then both the roots are going to be negative. Right. So, if, see, I hope all of you remember this table. Please memorize this table. Uh, you need not be writing this table in the examination because it's a waste of time. You can just by heart it so that uh, you don't need to write this down in the exam. So when these two are plus plus, right, the, the, uh, the sign before bx and c, if both of it is plus, then both the roots are going to be negative. So both your roots are going to be negative. Similarly, here, uh, what will be the product? The product of two numbers has to be 36 and the sum of the two numbers has to be 13. So, the two numbers are going to be 9 and 4. So, what will be the roots? It will be 9 by 4 and 4 by 4. Here, the coefficient of y squared is 4. So, divide both the uh, roots by 4. So, this will be the final roots that you get. And uh, here, what do you do? Here, you have plus plus. So, again, the roots are going to be both going to be negative. So, this is going to be minus 9 by 4 and this is going to be minus 1. So, now this is the uh, value of x that you have and this is the value of y that you have. So, look at compare both of these and what can you say? I can say that x is always greater than y. Correct answer will be option 3. So, the sign table method uh, even if you are not able to say the answer, see for some questions using the sign table method directly you can say what the answer will be without even writing down anything. Uh, but for some questions, again, for all questions, it is useful. At least you will know the sign of the roots and it will be more easier for you to find out the roots using this method. Next, all those of you who are new to the session, please go back uh, and refer to this sign table method in the additional example. See, additional example 4. Try this one and give me the answer. See what's given here? x plus 3 by 2x. That is equal to 5 by 2. That is one equation. And then you have root y minus 3 by root y. That is equal to 0. This one is very easy, right? You take this root y up. Uh, you multiply what you get. You will get y minus 3 is equal to 0 or y is equal to 3. Now, here, what will you get? You have, uh, what will this equation become? It will become 2x squared plus 3. Uh, yeah, 2x you will multiply here plus 3 that is equal to 5x or I can say 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 that is equal to 0. See now when I know this is going to be the uh, 
equation right 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0 I know both the roots that I am going to get are going to be positive see if this equation was in such a way that uh, if let us say okay I am just assuming uh, I am just trying to tell you how the sign table becomes useful for many questions see let us assume this was one equation now if the other equation was something like this 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0 assume that this was the second equation then at this point itself I know both the roots are going to be negative here I have already got y is a positive value but here by looking at the sign of this given equation I can say both the roots are negative so immediately I can say that y will be greater than x see there will be there might be some questions where this method helps you to arrive at the answer really faster without calculation so that's why I say go and refer to the sign method it is very useful okay now here for this particular question I know that by looking at this sign I know both the roots are going to be positive right so what will be the roots so I have to obviously solve it what will be the roots product of two numbers has to be 6 sum of the two numbers has to be 5 so the two numbers are going to be 3 and 2 and what are the roots that we are looking at here the coefficient of x squared is 2 so divide both of these by 2 so what will you get you will get 3 by 2 and 1 now both the roots are going to be positive so these are your values of x and this is your value of y so uh, if you see that y is always greater than x y is 3 x is either 1 or 1.5 so y is greater than x or i can say x is less than y which is option 2 next one so the next question is on number series so what's the logic for this one try this one and give me the answer what will come in place of question mark in the following number series 7 15 44 150 620 dash yes you're not able to crack it is it okay so the logic here is a bit weird yes uh, so we'll uh, I'll try it I'll, I'll solve it so see some of these logics no to get it in the examination it's very difficult so here what they have done is 7 into 1 plus 1 into 8 that is 15 now uh, next one you get 15 as the answer here right so 15 into 2 plus 2 into 7 here basically they're decreasing one one number and coming and uh, that will be equal to 44 so the next one will be 44 into 3 again plus 3 into here 8 7 so next one is going to be 6 right which is 150 then again you have 150 into 4 plus 4 into 5 that is equal to uh, 620 then 620 into 5 plus 5 into 4 which is equal to 3120 so your answer is going to be option 4 3120 next one 7 223 248 312 321 question mark what is the logic that is used here see 7 plus 6 cube is 223 now this 223 plus 5 squared is 248 see even if you find out the difference between these terms you no, know, you will be able to see get see a pattern and arrive at the logic faster then you have uh, 248 plus 4 cube which is equal to 312 312 plus 3 squared that is equal to 321 similarly 321 plus 2 cube that is equal to 300 29 cube squared cube squared alternating right and minus 1 for the number so what is the answer answer is option 5 329 next one 60 95 138 question mark 248 315 390 see what they have done is 60 plus 35 is 95 now what is 35 plus 8 35 plus 8 is uh, 43 so 95 plus 43 is 138 right see this is how they have done 60 plus let me just write it here neatly 60 plus 35 is equal to 95 in the next step what they are doing is 60 plus 35 plus 8 35 plus 8 is 43 so 60 plus 43 sorry 95 right 95 plus 43 that is equal to 138 now in the next step what they'll do is 138 plus here 43 plus 8 what is that 51 
138 plus 51 that is equal to 189. So, in the next step it will be 189 plus this plus 8, 59, right? That will be equal to uh, 248 and so on. So, what is the missing number here? It is going to be 189, right? That is option 2. Yes, incremental difference of differences or you can say incremental increase, right? So, the correct answer here is option 2, 189. Next one. So, the next, uh, next we are moving on to the data interpretation sets from this paper. So, try out this data interpretation set and once you are done, tell me then I will start solving it. See, this data interpretation set I felt was fairly easy. You just have to form a table uh, with the given information. Once you are done with the table, all the questions are very straightforward and you will be able to answer all the five questions. So, what is given here? In a survey conducted by Airways, number of international and domestic flights run in four different months. Uh, okay, so you have the months which are given are which months are given, the total number of flights in January, uh, March, February and April, right? So, four months are given and the details about the domestic and the in, uh, international flights in these months are given, right? So, I have... Uh, month, then international, domestic, okay. Now, let us, which are the months given? January, February, March and April. Now, uh, the total number of flights in January is same as the number of international flights in March. Okay, let us wait to use that. A total flight in March is twice the number of domestic flights in February and the number of international flights in February is 130 which is 30 more than twice the international flights in January. So, let me fix this first. See what are they saying? The number of international flights in February is 130 which is 30 more than twice the number of international flights in January. So, this 130 is 30 more than means 30 more than twice the number of international flights in January means what is the number of international flights in January? It is nothing but 50, right? See 50 into 2 plus 30 that is the number of international flights in February that is what they are meaning by this statement, right? So, number of international flights in January is nothing but 50. Now, next uh, in April number of international and domestic flights are equal which is equal to the number of domestic flights in January which is equal to 250. So, the number of domestic flights in January is 250 and they are saying that the number of international and domestic flights in uh, April is the same and it is equal to 250 that is the number of domestic flights in January. So, here it is 250, 250. Now, next um, now, let us look at the first statement that was given, right? We did not use that. Total number of flights in January is same as the number of international flights in March. So, what is the total number of flights in January? See, total flights is nothing but the sum of the international flights plus the domestic flights. So, 250 plus 50 that is 300. Now, what is this 300 equal to? This is equal to the uh, total number of international flights in March. So, this 300 is equal to the number of international flights in March. Then, next what have they said? Uh, a total, okay, yeah, a total flight in March is twice the number of domestic flights in February. Uh, okay, that we have not yet found out how many domestic flights are there in February. Let us wait for that. Now, look at this statement here. The ratio of the number of domestic flights in February to March is 9 is to 8. So, the ratio of number of domestic flights uh, of February to March is uh, 9 is to 8. So, uh, if there are 9x domestic flights in February, there are 8x domestic flights in March, correct? And then they are saying that the domestic flights in February is 20 more than the domestic flights in April. So, how many domestic flights are there in February? 20 more than domestic flights in April means 250 plus 20 that is equal to 270. Now, here I know this 270 is nothing but 9x or what is x? x is equal to 30. So, what is 8x? 8x is nothing but the number of domestic flights in March which is equal to 240. So, this is 240.
40. So, what is the total here? The total here will be uh, this is 400, 130 plus 270 that is 400, here it is going to be 540, here it is going to be 500. So, this is the final table that you get. Once you find this table, solving all the questions become very easy. What is the first question? What is the difference between the total flights in January and the total flights in February? So, total flights in January is 300, total flights in February is 400. So, what is the required difference 400 minus 300 which is equal to 100 that is option 4. Next one. What is the difference between the average number of international flights and the average number of domestic flights for all the given months together? Give me the answer for this. In April, the number of international and domestic flights are equal, uh, which is equal to number of domestic flights in January, which is equal to 250. See, uh, number of domestic flights in January is equal to 250 and they are saying number of international and domestic flights are equal in April. So, everything is equal to 250, that is how I write, based on the statement, yes. So, how would you solve this? What is the difference between the average number of international flights and average number of domestic flights for all the months put together? So, what is the uh, total number of international and total number of domestic flights for both the months, I mean all the months put together? So, total number of international flights is nothing but? Uh, 250 plus 50 that is 300, 300 plus 300 that is 600, 600 plus 130 that is 730 international flights are there totally. How many uh, domestic flights are there totally? 250 plus 250 that is 500, uh, so again 500 plus um, 250 that is 750, then you have uh, 750 plus 200 that is um, 950 and 950 plus 40 plus 20, so 950 plus 60, that is 1010, right. So, I am just finding out the total number of international and domestic flights. So, international total I have got it as 730, domestic total I have got it as 1010, right. Now, what is the difference between the average, right. So, this divided by 4, this divided by 4 months are there, find out this difference. So, what will be your answer 1010? minus 730 divided by 4 or this is equal to 70. The, this is difference is 280, right? 280 by 4 which is equal to 70. That is option 3. Or other way you can do is find out the difference between these domestic and international for each month and for all the differences add it, find the average of that. That way also you will get the same answer. Next one. Find the total number of international flights for all the given months together. Already we found that out, right? Total international flights for all the months given together. What did we find it out as? See, it is given here. Uh, total international is 730. That's what they are asking in the question. Very straightforward question. Correct answer is option 3. Yes, 730. Next one. Find the ratio of the number of international flights in January and February together and the number of domestic flights in February to the number of domestic flights in February. So, find the ratio of the number of international flights in January and February together. Uh, January and February international flights is how much? 130 plus uh, 50 that is 180. Right now, uh, how many domestic flights are there in February? 270. So, what are they asking here? So, international flights in Jan and Feb, Jan and Feb together is 180. Then, uh, domestic flights in February is nothing but 270. So, they are asking you for this ratio, right? 180 by 270, which is equal to 2 by 3. So, the correct answer is option 2, that is 2 by 3. Next one, what is the ratio of the difference between the number of international flights in January and February to the difference between the number of international flights in March and April? So, uh, international flights in January and February, where is that? 130, 50, what is the difference between this? 
130 uh, minus 50, right? Similarly, difference between March and April, 300 minus 250. So, this difference is 50, 300 minus 250 is 50. Here, what is the difference? 130 minus 50, that is 80. So, what is the ratio that we are looking for? It is nothing but 80 is to 50 or 8 is to 5, correct? See, uh, difference between uh, January and February is nothing but 130 minus 50, which is equal to 80. The next set, right? March and April, the difference is nothing but uh, 300 minus 250, which is equal to 50. So, the ratio is 80 is to 50, that is 8 is to 5, option 5. Got it? Okay. Now let's move on to the next question. So the next question was this data interpretation set where you are given a table and a pie chart. See especially for a prelims examination it makes a sense to uh, skip this uh, question because yeah, I got the DI but lack of time definitely current this uh, data interpretation uh, set you will be able to understand what is given what is to be done everything but too many calculations involved for this particular question in the prelims exam uh, given the time it would have been a especially for this paper at least it would have been a good choice to skip this question because there were a lot of other questions which were mark scoring okay now if it is the if such a question comes in any mains examination then might be you can give it a try because time allotted will be more right so for this uh, particular paper i felt this question you could have skipped it would have been a good uh, thing to skip it because there are a lot of other mark scoring questions not to it is not good to waste your time see what is given here they are uh, what are this what are they saying first they are saying that there is a pie chart okay now in this pie chart they are showing the percentage distribution of people in different cities right now totally so many people are there now in the year 2015 out of this this many people this is the percentage in each city now here they are giving the ratio of people in the year 2015 to 16 this gives the percentage of people below poverty line in the year 2015 and this gives the percentage of people above poverty line in the year 2016 now here remember no values are given and in all the questions most of the questions they are talking about values right like how many people are there above poverty line or how many people are there below poverty line in a given year in a particular city so for all this lot of calculations are involved right so it it was definitely a time consuming set now anyway since we are practicing let us try out this set now okay it is always good to practice uh, such questions so first try out this question and give me the answer then i'll start solving it if you consider total amount of uh, total people in a particular city there are only people either who are below poverty line or above poverty line that's what they mean and this total also it, in it includes only people either people is people are above poverty line or they are below poverty line what is the ratio of the number of people in the above poverty in city B and C in the year 2015 to the number of people below poverty in city A and D in the year 2016? So first what should you do? You have to find the number of people above poverty in city B and C in 2015. Okay. Similarly, you have to find out the number of people below poverty in A and D in the year 2016 and then take the ratio of that. See remember in the question also just uh, look at the table given. Uh, yeah, brain will implode, that's true Nila, but uh, let's try, let us try it out, no, you should know also how to approach these questions, even if you can give it a skip in the examination, it's better to solve it here. See, here what have they said, they have said percentage of below poverty line people, this is percentage of above poverty line people, so that also you have to uh, read it correctly. So first let us consider this T B and city C. Okay. Now this is year 2015 that they are asking. Now this graph represents the 2015 people, right? So in 2015, how many people are there in city B? In 2015, if you look at city B, 15 percentage of the people are in city B. So totally 1,20,000 people are there out of which 15 percentage of the people are in city B. So what is 15 percentage of 1,20,000? That is nothing but uh, 12,000 plus 6,000, right? 15 percentage is nothing but 10 percentage plus 5 percentage or that is 12,000 plus 6,000 that is 18,000. So 18,000 people are there in uh, city B. Now out of this 18,000 people in city B, how many people are there in above poverty line? 
above poverty line in city B. How many people are there? See here in city B it is given that 15 percentage of the people are below poverty line or what can I say out of this 18,000 people 15 percentage are below poverty line means that is 18,000 into uh, 15 by 100 right that is nothing but uh, what is 15 percentage of 18,000 15 percentage of 18,000 is nothing but 1800 plus 900 that is 2700 so I can say that out of this 18,000 people 2700 people are below poverty line in city B so how many people are there who are above poverty line in city B? It is nothing but 18,000 minus 2,700 which is equal to 15300. So, so many people are there above poverty line in city B. Similarly, I have to find out how many people are there above poverty line in city C. So, first let us find out how many people are there in city C in the year 2015. Again, out of 1.2 lakh people, 10 percentage are in city C or I can say 12,000 people are in city C. So, above poverty line people in city C is how much? Here again if you see below poverty line 25 percentage people are there. So, above poverty line how many people will be there? 75 percentage or 3 by 4th of this 12,000 right? 12,000 into 3 by 4. So, many people will be above poverty line or what is this value? This is equal to 9,000. Yes, now, uh, so above poverty line in city C is 9000, above poverty line in city B is 15300 in 2015. What is the sum of these three, these two? It is nothing but 15300 plus 9000. Okay, now let us come to the remaining part of the question. You have to find out the number of people below poverty line in city A and D in the year 2016. See, this part is... Uh, little more calculative why see when it comes to year 2016 they have given here the ratio of the people from, uh, with respect to year 2015 and 16 so first you have to find out in city a how many people are there in 2015 then based on that find out how many people are there in city a in 2016 similarly for city d you have to find out how many people are there in 2015 from that you have to find out how many people are there in 2016 right no so how will you do that again a very uh, calculative step here how will you do that see if you look at city a 20 percentage of the population belongs to city a so how many people are there in city a uh, in the year 2015 1 lakh 20 thousand into 20 by 100 or i can say 24 thousand people are there in city a in the year so i'm just going to write down the values here okay so 2015 2016 right so how many people are there in city a in the year 2015 i have uh, 20 percentage of 1.2 lakhs that is 24000 people now here it is given that the ratio of population of people in the year 2015 to 16 is in the ratio 4 is to 5 so if this is 24000 then how much will come here 30000 will come here right then only the ratio becomes 4 is to 5 Right, you see if 24,000 accounts to 4, what will account to 5? 5 will be 30,000, right? Now, similarly, if you consider, uh, this is in case of city A, right, in 2015 and 16. Similarly, consider city D. In city D, in the year uh, 2015, 15 percentage of the population is there in city D. 15 percentage is how much? In 2015, out of 1.2 lakhs, 15 percentage belong to city d or i can say 18000 belong to city d in the year 2015 now then how many people will be there in city d in 2016 18000 refers to 9 so 10 will be how much 20000 right only the ratio is 9 is to 10 so these many people are there in city d in uh, 2016 now let us find out how many people are there above poverty line right above or below what are they saying Again, they are asking for below poverty line. Here, they have given above poverty line information. So, how many people are there who are below poverty line? 25 percentage. Similarly, how many people are there uh, here who are uh, below poverty line? 20 percentage. So, what is uh, 25 percentage of 30,000 above poverty line? 
sorry below poverty line right 25 percentage of 30,000 is nothing but 7,500 right so below poverty line in city A in 2016 is nothing but 7,500 similarly below poverty line in city D in uh, 2016 is how much 20 percentage of this that is 20 percentage of 20,000 that is nothing but 4,000. So, what is the ratio that you are looking for? This is the ratio that you are looking for which is equal to 243 divided by 150 option 2. Yes. Next one. Since we are just practicing I am just solving it here so that you understand what is given in the table and how do we do it that is all. Okay. So, try this one and give me the answer. See, problem is also no, everywhere there is one is 2016, one is 2015. At least if they give both to be the same, it will be a little less confusing for us, right? Try this one also. Let's try one more question from this. What is the difference between the number of uh, people above poverty line in city C in the year 2016? So, if you look at 2000, this city C. Now, city C, actually, the how much was the population? The population was 12,000. Now, uh, what would be the population? See, they are saying the ratio of population, uh, 2015 population, I am writing here, 2016 population writing here. So, population in 2015 to 16 is in the ratio, 3 is to 4. So, if this is 12,000, what is the population here in 2016? Uh, it's going to be 16,000, right? See, 12 is to 16 will be 3 is to 4. So, this is going to be 16,000. So, this I have got. Now, what are they saying? Uh, what is the difference between number of people above poverty line in city C in the year 2016? So, above poverty line means below poverty line is 50 percentage. Above poverty line is also 50 percentage here in 2016. So, 16,000 into 50 by 100 or half of 16,000. So, this value comes to what? It comes to 8,000. Right, and the number of people below poverty line in city E in the year 2015. So, city E in the year 2015 means in city E in the year 2015, how many people are there? 12,000 people are there, right? 10 percentage. Now, number of people below poverty line in city E is 18 percentage. So, 12,000 into 18 by 100, correct. 12,000 into 18 by 100. So, that will be the number of people below poverty line in city E in the year 2015. You have to find the difference. This was a fairly easy one, no? Calculation wise compared to the previous question, this one calculation was fairly easy. So, uh, I think you will get the answer as 2160. So, find out this difference 8000 minus 2160. That is equal to 5840. Correct answer is option 1. Yeah, try this one. Number of people in uh, city B, C and D in the year 2016 is approximately what percentage of the number of people in city A, E and F in the same year? So, for this basically you will have to find out how many people are there in city B, uh, C and or basically all the cities in 2015 and 16 and based on that you have to find the answer. Correct? See here, how will you do it? If you look at city A, 20 percentage of the people belong to city A in 2015, right? So, how many people were there in city A? 24,000 people were there and in 2016, 4 is to 5 means this has to be 30,000. Similarly, if you look at city B, 15 percentage of the population belong to city B. So, 15 percentage of 1,20,000 is 18 now, if this is 18,000, this is in the ratio 3 is to 4. So, how many people should be there here? Um, 3 is to 4. So, this has to be 24,000, right? Similarly, if you look at city C, how many people are there? 10 percentage, that is 12,000. Let us just write down this first. Now, if you look at city D, where is city D? What percentage is given here? Let me look at 15 percentage, right? D was 15 percentage that is missing here. Uh, so, D is 15 percentage means again 18,000 and then if you look at E again 10 percentage that is 12,000. If you look at F 30 percentage. So, 30 percentage is um, 
36,000, right? 12,000 into 3, that is 36,000. Now, how many people will be there in 2016? See, 12,000 in the ratio 3 is to 4 means this has to be 16,000. Here again, 18,000 ratio 9 is to 10 means this has to be uh, 20,000. See, some of these values we calculated in the previous question itself. You might not have to uh, write down all this again like how I do. Now, here uh, 12,000 means this has to be 18,000, right? 2 is to 3. Uh, 36,000 is to 42,000, right? 6 is to 7, 42,000. So, this will be the numbers. Now, just add these number of people in city B, C, D in the year 2016. It will be uh, 24,000. This is 2016, right? 24,000 plus 16,000 plus 20,000. Now, in uh, what percentage of people in A, E, F? So, A, E, F. That is 30,000 plus 18,000 plus 42,000. Find out this ratio. That will be your answer. So, I think you will get the answer as option 4. That is the correct answer. Approximately, you will get it as 67 percentage. In the exam, you can skip this question, but you have to try it out in the class, right? Unless we practice. See, the more and more uh, difficult questions you practice, no? When uh, questions come in the examination, you find it easier to solve, right? You will not be scared at least. Sometimes if you don't uh, solve difficult questions at all and you keep solving easy ones, then when really difficult, then when you see a question in the examination, you might get worried. You should not be like that. You should have tried out all sorts of questions, right? Before the exam. So that's the whole point of doing this question now in the session. Don't worry. Okay? Great. So I think with that, the questions for the session are over. We have solved all the, almost all the questions from the quantitative ability section. Great. So that is it from us for now. And I'll see you in the next session. And this is Gayatri signing off. Till then, take care. Do take the All India mock exam this week. Good night. Bye.